Let's see if my not entirely fantastic track record when it comes to TBRs will continue. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I'm looking back at some of the books that I could not wait to read when we were at the start of 2021 and figure out if I actually did get to read them. So these were books that for the months of January to June, I really wanted to focus on and I had such high expectations for reading. That's either because I had already read something by the author, it was an author who I really enjoyed in other aspects of their careers, or I just really liked the process of the book. Let's take a look at if I have actually read any of them. First one on the list was Asking for a Friend by Andy Osho. I did attempt this one, but I think I picked it up when I was going through a pretty bad reading slump. So it's still on my TBR, but I was enjoying what I had read. I just wasn't really in the mood set for reading. In this book, you're following three friends, one of whom is in her 20s, one in her 30s, and one in her 40s. And they're all very much at kind of different stages of their dating lives and very different stages of dating as in general. They decide to kind of throw caution to the wind, get rid of all the dating apps that they're used to, and just go up to guys and ask them out. I really liked the idea of that, but as I said, I was just going through quite a difficult time in life, and I couldn't really connect to any books, so I'm definitely going to have to go back and try that one again. The next one up on the list was Mr. Roy Across the Street by Catherine Freeman. This one was about Mia who had moved to Manchester, moved into a new apartment, was looking for a brand new start in life and had noticed the guy in the apartment opposite her working out every day at 10am without fail. And then she starts noticing him in other areas of her life and it turns out he's one of the bartenders in a bar that she starts to frequent. It sounded like the great book, but I just didn't connect with the writing style and I didn't really like Mia as a character. So unfortunately, I DNF'd that one quite early. Next on that list was The Little Swiss Ski Chalet by Julie Kaplan. That is quite the tongue twister. I really enjoyed this one. This is part of a wider romantic escape series, but I wouldn't necessarily say that you need to have read all of the series before you dig into this one. There isn't a lot of character overlap, there isn't a lot of situation overlap, and all of them take place quite in different locations across the world. So it's great for like escapism and for travel in a year that we haven't really been able to travel quite as freely. I really enjoyed this book because of the depictions of Swiss lifestyle. I really enjoyed the inclusion of Kaffee and Kuchen, which is a kind of a German, um, Swiss, Austrian tradition where you sit down with everybody in the afternoon and have some coffee and a cake. It's probably one of my favorite things about Germany. There's also some representation of adoption in this book as Mina, the main character, was adopted as a child. And there is a slight little hint to what's going to happen in the next book in regards to where it's going to be set and who the character is going to be but that wouldn't necessarily mean that you would have had to read this book before you go on the next journey. I really enjoyed this one. I think I gave it about four stars because I felt like there was a couple of things that just knocked it off. I felt like there were slightly maybe too many romantic interests for the main character, but I absolutely loved the setting and I really loved the kind of lifestyle that was shown in here. Next up was Before I Saw You by Emily Houghton. And this is the only of these books that I had actually read already in 2020 coming into the section. This one is about two characters, Alfie and Alice, who have both been in accidents before the start of this book and are now in a kind of a rehabilitation ward in a hospital where they're going through quite a lot of physical therapy and emotional therapy to kind of get themselves ready for going back out into the world. Alice has suffered from quite a lot of facial disfiguration following this incident and isn't comfortable with anybody seeing how she looks. She has quite a lot of self-esteem issues in regards to how she's looking at the moment and doesn't want anybody to come behind the curtain of her bed apart from doctors who she needs to see and anybody that she needs to see in a kind of medical situation. Alfie is a lot more kind of outgoing and a lot more boisterous, but you do also have in the back of your mind that he has gone through something so life-changing and that is probably something that he's putting across as a coping mechanism for everything that he's going through. Even though they've never seen each other, the two form a really strong bond I really like how this came across because it showed that you don't have to put so much emphasis on how a person looks so that you can enjoy their company, that you can form such a strong bond based solely on their personality as well. I also really loved some of the other characters who shared the ward with Alfie and with Alice. It is such an emotional story, but it's genuinely such a great one. 
I read a copy of this from Neck Alley initially and it didn't come with an epilogue that I have found out is now in the final copy of the book. So I am definitely going to go and check out what the epilogue is like because I did feel the book that I had read just needed a little bit of something to tidy it up a little bit. Next one on the list was the final book in a series and it was Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I haven't read this one. I put this one on the list kind of to spur me on to finish the series and also to spur me on to retake a hint Danny Brown which I know so many people who have read through the entire series loved. They said that the second book was probably one of their favourite from the entire series but I also wanted to finish out how the books were going to end up. I have got such high expectations for how this one is going to go and I think that that's kind of what's putting me off reading it knowing that so many people many of whom don't read romance as their primary genre have loved this book so much kind of makes me a little bit wary in the fact that I read so much romance what if I don't enjoy these books as much as everybody else did. Next up was The Single Dad's Handbook by Lindsay James and I implore you to buy tissues before you read this book. It is incredibly emotional, but it is also one of the best books that I've read so far this year. You're following Evan, who has lost his wife Claire to breast cancer before the events of this book take place. And their daughter Violet is now five. She's going to school for the first time. She's kind of going out in the world on her own a little bit. And you're following how Evan is kind of coming to terms with having to raise Violet now as a single parent without his wife's input. He's clearing out their bedroom one day and he finds a series of letters that Claire has left behind for him with kind of captions of read this when you're having a bad day or read this on Violet's first day of school or read this when you're going through the terrible teenage phase. The letters are filled with helpful tips that she wants to give to him or things that she would love to say to Violet if she was not there to say anymore. I absolutely adored the premise of this book. I loved the setting. It's set in Edinburgh, which is such a fantastic city. And Lindsay really paints a great picture of Edinburgh as they're walking through the streets of the town. I absolutely adored this book and I cannot wait to see what Lindsay brings out next. Next on the list was The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. And all I'm going to say about this is that you know you're really enjoying a book when you cannot put it down and finish it in one day. Like the Single Dad's Handbook, this book is set in Scotland, but it's actually more set in the Scottish Highlands than in a city area. I loved the depictions of the Scottish Highlands when our main character, Birdie, is going on a little trip around the Scottish Highlands with one of her co-workers. This book follows Birdie, who is in a hotel in the Scottish Highlands as a wine connoisseur and as a sommelier, and she is imagining that the hotel she's going to turn up to is kind of like a two, three star establishment. Everything is kind of higgledy piggledy, and it's not going to be like a really important job. However, her expectations vastly do not meet reality. The hotel is a five star establishment, white coat service, and all of that. The problem is. Birdie is not a sommelier. She has absolutely no idea about wine apart from red, white and rosé. She's here to be her best friend Heather who has gone to Italy in an attempt to keep her relationship with an Italian man going. There is so much hijinks in this book. There is a lot of camaraderie between Birdie and all of her co-workers and I absolutely adored this book. This was a fantastic debut and I am really excited to see Lizzie's next book. Next on the list was The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary and I only kind of managed to get a copy of this in about June and I haven't gotten around to it yet. However, I am still really excited by the prospects of this book and I absolutely adore a road trip novel. Even though I have a feeling that it's going to be a little bit of an awkward read because the main characters in this, Addie and Dylan, have recently split up and haven't really spoken since the breakup, I am a little bit apprehensive. But I am also really excited to get to it because I have loved both of Beth O'Leary's books right now and I cannot wait to see what happens in this one. Next on the list was People We Meet on Vacation, which you might also know as You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. This was the second of Emily Henry's books that I read and I loved this. I am definitely going to go and reread this sometime soon because I feel like I read this a little bit early in the year where... The temperatures weren't really owing to what this book was talking about. In this book, you're following Poppy and Alex, who have been best friends for about 10 years, and they have always gone on holidays together. They've gone right around the world. But about two years before the book events start, Poppy and Alex had a huge 
falling out on one of their holidays and they haven't spoken to each other since. As the beginning of this book unfolds, Alex's brother is getting married in California and Poppy is simultaneously sent to California on a kind of a writing assignment from her boss. Poppy is working at a travel magazine at the moment and Alex is working as a teacher. So also their jobs hadn't really given them a lot of time to kind of mend up the patches in their relationship and get back talking to each other. They decide to go and take this as a one last ditch attempt to kind of put everything back together and see if there's anything that they can salvage from this. And of course, you know what's going to happen in the course of this book. We do also find out what happened two years ago and why Poppy and Alex don't get along anymore. And I absolutely loved the build up in this book because you're kind of flitting from what's happening now to going back around all of the holidays that Poppy and Alex have been on and what they were doing while they were there and how well they had gotten along. I absolutely adored this book and I am definitely going to pick this one back up again. Next up on the list was another book by another of my most anticipated authors. It was The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. In this book, you were following Jess, who signed up for like a dating app website thing where you were paired with people based upon your DNA and how it matches with other people's. The thing about it is that Jess was paired with the DNA of the app's founder, not somebody who was just using it. I thought that this was such an interesting and entertaining take on like dating apps and finding love on the internet. I only got a copy of this one, I think around early July as well. And I haven't picked it up yet, but I am so excited to get around to it because the process of this book absolutely calls my name out. Finally on the list was Someone I Used to Know by Paige Toon. I keep singing the title of this book in the form of that song by Gautier from like 10 or 15 years ago. So if you keep doing that too, you're welcome. As you will have seen in my most recent book haul, this one only came onto my shelves about two or three weeks ago. So I haven't gotten the chance to get around to it yet. So unfortunately, that one is still lingering on my TBR as well. From that list that I made in like the end of 2020, start of 2021, we have got five that I've already read, one that I have attempted and will go back to, five that I haven't started yet, and one DNF. I think that that's pretty okay. I think it's got enough that I've already gotten started, but there's a little bit more work that needs to be done. Of the ones that I've said that I haven't read yet, is there any that you think I should prioritize immediately? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.